Hey everybody, it's Mike here. Today we're going to review the sequel of Jedi Fallen Order, uh, which is Jedi Survivor. And we're really going to answer the question, is this one of the best Star Wars games ever made? Is it worth all the praise it's getting? And we're really going to delve deep into it. Um, but first, I just want to say, if you haven't already, please consider checking out my channel. Uh, your support's really appreciated. And if you like this type of content, please hit that button and subscribe. You know, I kind of wanted to spend my time with this one, so I didn't rush on getting this review out. I decided I'd take my time so I can give you the best possible advice and the best possible recommendation on a purchase decision. Now, there's a lot of crap going on about this game, and I just want to get the record straight. So this is not like a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 game. Um, not by any means, because it's not a complete game yet. I'm going to get into the, not only the negative, but I'm going to talk about the good things. It's not a horrible game either. It's a great game, actually. It's just broken in some areas. The game itself will tell you it's broken. Uh, I mean, look at this clip, for example. This is where I literally entered a dark side, and the game told me the game would uh, continue in a broken state. Uh, it literally says things will likely be broken. I don't want to play a game where it tells me things are going to be broken. They need to, they shouldn't release it if it's going to be broken. Um, and it's not a complete game, in my opinion. Um, what happened to releasing games in complete states? Now it's all about patches and DLCs. I want the full copy of the game and I don't want this crap, that this unexpected error. Um, like little things like this. This game had so much potential and it could have been so much more than it already is if it just was ready to go and you know what by the time this game is completely patched i'll be probably moved on to another game we got zelda tears of the kingdom coming up we're not going to be worried about jedi survivor another thing electronic arts could have done is just wait a couple of months before releasing trying not to release it on the same window as zelda tears of the kingdom at the same time they could have fixed all these patches without releasing it in this state but that's just my opinion Anywho, that's kind of why I made this channel, uh, because I see a lot of crap out there, and I'm not I'm not bashing on any particular reviews, but this game is absolutely not a 9 out of 10. Um, anyone that rates it higher than maybe an 8, I just, I don't, I don't see it, you know, I, and I don't see how. Um, we can't promote these unfinished copies of games, it just, it's just not right, and they're going to continue developing unfinished messes if we continue to praise developers for delivering this kind of stuff. I'm not saying it's crap. This game, again, this game is very good, and you hear a lot of game reviewers like, oh, this is the, the game that truly makes you feel like a Jedi. Yeah, it, it does make you feel like a Jedi at maybe uh, 20 frames per second. Yeah, it does make me feel like a Jedi. However, um, other than that, yeah, there's a lot of good skills. I would say it, the skill tree is quite simple. Um, it's definitely expanded from Jedi Fallen Order. The combat's excellent, all right? Let's just get that out of the way. The combat's great. Just the different, they added some different lightsaber styles and the different, uh, you, you start off and uh, Cal Kestis, the main character, he had already has all of his abilities, none of that crap where you have to learn all the different abilities again. So um, that's definitely uh, great that they didn't do that. And also the story's very good too. I found myself very interested in the story. Um, you got your classic Star Wars, Star Wars storyline. So in terms of maybe storyline, this game's a nine out of 10, and maybe I can see why some uh, review companies will, will give it that, because the story really is top notch, right? This is, I'm telling you, if, this, if they just released this thing in a finished state, we would have uh, we would have had ourselves quite the treat. And I do look forward to seeing when this game is fully in order. But as of right now, uh, it's not a nine. The collectibles in this game are awesome too. Uh, you can actually go find different pieces for your lightsaber. Um, I had so much fun customizing, you know, you got your different colors. You could actually customize your different lightsaber colors to begin with. So there's no nonsense of unlocking all the colors. Tons of ways to customize your character too, um, in terms of like just your general appearance. There's all sorts of different types of robes. Any sort of Star Wars awesome costume, they probably have it in this game. So they definitely have you covered there. Um, yes, yeah, so there's lots of customization um, in, in terms of lightsaber and your character, and then the, how you build your character. Um, and then you have your, like your different trees, like your forest tree, um, you have your survival tree, and lightsaber tree. Another cool thing they added is uh, the different lightsaber styles. So you got like, uh, for example, your double-sided Darth Maul style lightsaber. Uh, those are really good to do when <clears throat> you got a lot of enemies around you. Then you have your double lightsaber where you have two lightsabers and uh, this leads to less defense but you can also make stronger attacks 
and you got your original single lightsaber style. I personally like to use this one. Um, they added also a really cool style. Uh, you actually have a blaster in one hand and a lightsaber in the other. I think it's really cool. It's also very original too. We haven't really seen it really in a mainstream Star Wars game and or in a movie where you have a lightsaber in one hand and and a, a blaster in the other. So that was really cool to be introduced. Finally, something original, right? So in terms of gameplay, I'm quite impressed. Like storyline in this game and gameplay in this game, great. Easily a 9 out of 10. And the only thing really breaking up the action would be like the frame rate drops. For example, you always have to play in performance mode. I'm playing on the PS5 and I don't dare not take performance off. You're definitely going to really suffer in terms of frames if you do that. And so I've, I've kept performance mode on the whole way and I don't see myself taking it off or else you're literally going to be watching a slideshow. You can't stop talking about performance when reviewing this. Uh, this is the game when performance mode is off. There's literally almost like a, a glow or shadow around my character. That's how bad the frames are. You, it, you're literally looking at a slideshow. It's, so um, yeah, this little clip tells it all. Of course, this is like an open world environment. So um, I can give it credit for that. So you're going to get less frames there. But we got like games like Horizons Forbidden West where they're, like the frames are great on that. I haven't had any issues on that. And because those games are properly optimized, this game is clearly not, and they can patch it all they want, but you can just tell that this is very, it's almost embedded in the programming. It's going to have a hard time fixing this because then this is a whole mess to fix. And But now we're going to go back to uh, storyline, one of the things that make this game great. So uh, obviously Jedi Survivor doesn't only have great combat but as a rich story that explores the dangers of being a Jedi that's ruled by the Empire and then you'll find other Jedi survivors each with their own like unique personalities and stories to tell and another really good improvement this time around is the characters actually interacted with you a lot more during the levels uh, before and I found in Fallen Order a lot of time it was just you and BD1 one of my favorite additions in Jedi Survivor is Pylon Saloon so this is basically a cantina and it has some collectibles there and it grows as you progress through the storyline and you'll see different characters you ran into so i really like that sense of progression but now we're going to go back to uh storyline one of the things that make this game great so uh, obviously jedi survivor doesn't only have great combat but has a rich story that explores the dangers of being a jedi that's ruled by the empire and then you'll find other jedi survivors each with their own like unique personalities and stories to tell you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, different uh, variety of gameplay mechanics like stealth, puzzle solving, and exploration. Uh, the game's levels are expertly designed, offering a mix of open-ended environments and really good linear set pieces that keep the action fresh and exciting. But overall, Jedi Survivor is an excellent game that will, will definitely satisfy you. Um, when you look past the performance issues, uh, you're really going to have a really good time with this one. Uh, the combination of that great fast-paced combat and the rich storytelling and the different gameplay mechanics really make this an immersive experience and you're really going to have a good time um, and over time i truly believe they're going to fix these like different performance issues and this game is going to be much better um, and in total it took me around say around 30 hours to beat the the main story and you're going to get a lot of returning characters from jedi full on order like marin grease and Cire. so I really like that and you got some new characters like Bode which I really like and the levels are absolutely huge and there's a lot of different collectibles in it so you're gonna have even more hours of gameplay and yes this game does have new game plus so you're gonna really have fun with that um, and by the time new game plus round maybe they'll fix the performance issues who knows right but I'm um, overall if I'm gonna give this a rate game a rating at this point in this state I'm gonna give it like a an eight okay because uh i think it has a lot of potential and it maybe it can be a nine if it fix they fix these performance issues somehow but it's a, i'd give it a solid eight uh, you're gonna have a great time star wars fans are gonna have fun with it and the answer is this is not the best star wars game in my opinion ever made <clears throat> you're gonna have a, you're, you're gonna feel like a jedi but man those performance issues really just hold this game back and that's just me being very honest with you and it's your money um like i said if you're a star wars fan you're gonna want to buy this anyways but i'm telling you it's uh 
it's, I'd wait for maybe a sale or maybe until they fix the performance issues. And that's just giving you my honest opinion on that. And one more thing I'd like to add, which is very important, is that I'm playing on the PS5 version. And, uh, and I hear those on PC even have an even worse experience. So I can only imagine the, the horrible performance issues they have. So if you're a PC, I would wholeheartedly not recommend this. I would, uh, but otherwise, yeah, this is a good one. And if you like this type of content, please consider checking out my channel and hit that subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.